So I've started a fun weekend project I need to tell you about. So one thing which became apparent immediately as soon as I learned uh, Reanimated 2, by the way, shout out Terry uh, Shadayak. You know him, right? He does. Uh, yes, I do. He's the he's one who introduced the... me to Reanimated 2. Wow. I think he, he's like so much in the bleeding edge. He's also always on the GitHub and works through the C++ code, uh, making the magic that is Reanimated 2 even happen um, beyond my understanding. So this is definitely the guy who is um, doing so much work behind the scenes. Terry is a man, and I remember we, you know, I used to, in Reanimated 1, to do this um, pan, uh, pinch gesture uh, handling videos, and I would do this uh, WhatsApp, uh, can it be any reactive, and I was showing these complex use cases, and we worked through these problems together, some of these problems, and he used all these recipes plus, plus some in Reanimated 2, which he packaged in React Native uh, Gallery, and now I'm like, there's so much knowledge, I think, in this package about also the quirk of uh, pin gesture and learn Android on iOS and making it consistent across platform. But uh, I don't even feel like uh, redoing it myself for Reanimated 2. And now I'm like redirecting people to use this, this package because the work he has done is, uh, is absolutely incredible. And that's only one piece of it. But so Terry is the one that, who introduced me to Reanimated 2, showed me the concepts and so on. And one thing that became apparent immediately, and I mentioned it in my first video about Reanimated 2, and that's a topic we, we talked about it quickly, briefly here on, on this podcast. Reanimated 1, you know what's the biggest weakness of Reanimated 2? What's the biggest weakness of 2? Of version uh, 2. <laughs> well, then, yeah, in Reanimated 1 was that, like, you had, like, this all these functions, add, sub, instead of... Um, uh, like natural, how you would naturally do it in programming. In two, um, I think it's like the friction between the two threads that you have. Exactly. So the UI thread and the native thread. And now it's become like not so apparent um, on which thread you are currently running this code on and when it's going to switch. Well said. <laughs> exactly. So the biggest weakness of Reanimated 2 is that it's too good. Now you have these two uh, universes that are like, so the UI thread and the JavaScript thread that coexist with each other. And if you're a newcomer, it's hard to see which which one is which and to understand. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's so good that that's actually it's uh, own weakness sometimes. So TypeScript, ESLint. They don't understand. They don't know what's a UI thread, what's a JavaScript thread. And so if you invoke... Yeah, I don't understand it either. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And newcomers, they don't. So I started an ESLint plugin. That's something I wanted to do wow. since uh, a long time. Uh, that leverage TypeScript information to resolve functions, detect if they are worklets or not, detect if the context is the UI thread or the JavaScript thread, and then throw errors accordingly. Wow. So actually, it will be super obvious on which thread I am running it on and I will be unable to make my mistakes. Yes, exactly. Wow, that's amazing. And How do you figure out what's the right thing to do? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting because, well, where to start? Um, first of all, so it's a really a special kind of ESLIN plugin, which is really leveraging the TypeScript compiler and uh, compiler services and type checker services. And I think there are only a few ESLIN tools which are really leveraging uh, type information. And I have to say that the work that is done by ESLIN TypeScript in terms of APIs, in terms of you know, going back and forth between ESLint and TypeScript in terms of integrating TypeScript um, compiler within the ESLint. I mean, you've wrote ESLint plugins, right? You have some experience with it. It's absolutely incredible. The, the work they are doing is so professional. It also made me wonder who's doing this uh, TypeScript ESLint, for instance, or like uh, where is the backing? Because these projects are so professional, are, the quality is so good that also it makes you wonder, you know, some, we use these things that are open source, we don't even think about it. 
but uh, when you dive into dive into the internals and you see the quality, it makes you wonder, like um, you know, about the people behind the scene working on it. Yeah, that's like so interesting. I I know the TypeScript ESLint project, and it really does um, give ESLint like so much more knowledge and can therefore tell you so much more. And I bet like the mer the majority of people right now are not. Um, using any rules that require this TypeScript ESLint. Um, yes. So I'm, if you want to use it, I think you have to like um, change your ESLint RC um, Absolutely. file a little bit. To know about your TypeScript configuration and so on. Yeah, so you have to pass in your tsconfig.json yes. uh, path. Um, I only have like one rule enabled, um, which uh, actually takes use of it. So it likes intelligently... Uh, recognizes whether something is a promise and tells you if you forget to await it. So in some projects, I don't even have like TypeScript ESLint and everything set up because it's, I just use it for this one rule. But now I'm really intrigued and will probably enable it for every mm. project. Yeah. So now this new infrastructure is really enabling, I think, a long tail of plugins and tools which you can build quickly for your own specific use cases you know, like maybe internal to your company or maybe an API and you could easily detect if you're using the API the right way, you know, if the sequence of uh, function calls in the right order and so on. Um, you know, I think it's crazy now how easily you can build uh, such uh, tools. And I think there's going to be a new era of people building small custom plugins for their really specific business needs which they only have and no one else in the world has, but that are enabled uh, uh, easily by ESLint. That being said, uh, so this, game changer. It's a game changer. <laughs> it's a game changer, <laughs> confirm. That being said, so one thing which is not a game changer at all, and that you, I remember you alluded to in, previous, in one previous video. So the part which was a bit, uh, let me dare say, annoying, uh, was the boilerplate. I spent, so to this day, I spent uh, at least as much time getting the boilerplate working than developing the plugin. You know, when we do these React Native projects, we do we use uh, Bob, which is incredible and does everything for us. And in ESLint, I didn't find, especially ESLint TypeScript, I didn't find anything, um, uh, I didn't find an equivalent. There are some generators, but they, they are not very good. And, uh, it's crazy that I did have to spend as much time, you know, doing the boilerplate of the plugin, making sure it's loaded properly and so on, with all the intricacy, right, with TypeScript and so on, and, you know, making sure that uh, the generated code matches the module system and stuff like that. Um, is that something you've also experienced or? Oh, well, I must say, I mean, if you ask yourself the question, okay, I want to write an ESLint rule or an ESLint plugin, where do you even start? Yeah. And how do I learn all of this? I mean, there's so much you have to learn. Um, yes. How I always started was to look for a similar project and then copy it and adapt it. That's exactly but, what I did. But I mean, did. your plugin is so much a game changer that there might not be something so similar. No, that's funny because, no, so that's exactly what I did. And indeed, there's only one plugin which I know of and with two rules which are using the compiler system. And that's what I did. I copied essentially what, what they did. And, uh, but then it's uh, funny, like the level of details in which you need to copy things, for instance, in the TypeScript configuration, so things work. Now to answer your original questions about how this plugin works. It's pretty cool. Wow. So... You know, there is a workload directive, which is part of the JavaScript AST. So if you declare a function as being a workload, uh, we know that it's a workload context. And then if you invoke a function, we ask the type checker about this function. And we can get the type declaration of, of the function from TypeScript, and we can check in the function declaration if it has the workload directive at the top. If it does, it's a workload function, everything is good. Then there's an interesting use case where, for instance, you take a function, uh, a library like Redash, you only have the type declarations. So you don't have the body mm -hmm. of the function. So you don't know if it's a workload or not. And so I was thinking about what's the best way to solve this issue. 
And what I came up with is simply adding uh, the worklet GS doc annotation. Because also part of the TypeScript type checker is that you can access the GS doc. So if you, are an ex uh, if you have an external library, uh, we require you to use at worklet as the GS doc, which I think is a fair uh, solution. I don't know what you think, or maybe you know there would be another way to mark the function as, as being a worklet. I'm not sure. Okay, I see. So, yeah, I mean, that definitely makes sense. So, this you cannot um, access the string worklet from in the it, type So, you have to use a different way. Okay, yes. that makes perfect sense for me. And uh, so, now then, now that you know whether it's a worklet or not, what you then? So if it's uh, if you invoke um, a function which doesn't have the worklet annotation or directive in the uh, UI thread context, we throw an error. Um, and then of course we also know about you know if you're using the reanimated module or if you're using the built-in functions. So we know also about you know if you, you can use new date object dot keys within the uh, within a worklet, you're not going to get an error. And then because we're using, it's not static analysis, it's really using the type information. It's actually, you cannot trick the compiler. So for instance, I can invoke a function called foo. And if foo is a variable which binds to, let's say, object.keys, then it's, gonna, it's not going to throw an error because it knows that the function is actually, uh, you know, not doing a call across the bridge. So it's actually pretty cool because you, you cannot cheat the compiler, essentially. Wow, okay. It's crazy. So... What I'm wondering is, I mean, now in the, I don't know, you probably already have uh, a newer version of reanimated and then they like try to give you some type of validation on the C++ side and tell you, um, yes. oh, you need to run, this, you need to wrap this in run on JS or like we detected that you try to run something um, like curly braces, something it's, uh, yeah, I don't see it in the code editor. So that's, I think, one difference I see um, where your plugin makes it a lot easier. Are there any other differences where it helps me more? Yeah, so no, exactly. We want, thanks now to this tooling, we want uh, the IDE to understand these two environments, the JavaScript thread and the UI thread. So I have other IDs. I mean, I'm just getting started with this. And one idea I have also, for instance, is to detect side effects into, you know, use animated style or use derived values. So maybe if you have dot value assign. And again, it's not, since we're using the type information, we know that the dot value comes from a shared animation value. It's not something else which is called, you know, dot value and things like this. Um, so yeah, the general idea is really now to, we know that we have the infrastructure for us to build plugins that understand the two environments, JavaScript thread and UI thread. I think it's pretty exciting because now the IDE is going to have the same implicit knowledge that we have when we write reanimated two code. Because in our head, we know that these two things coexist. And thankfully, now the IDE will know too. <laughs>